Um, so my name is James Klein. I'm the executive director for Open Power Foundation. Uh, and Gannison asked me to come in and give a little intro about uh, the foundation and what we're doing. And um, uh, so here we go. So first off, just for those who don't know what Open Power Foundation actually is, uh, we were actually launched in 2013. Uh, we are a nonprofit. We serve member companies that are um, doing great things within the open source uh, hardware ecosystem. Uh, we have about 350 plus members as of today. Uh, this is global, uh, so across pretty much every region you can think of. Um, and we had a big change in 2019, actually. We fully open sourced the Power ISA. Um, so before that, it was it was open power as in open uh, collaboration, but not necessarily open uh, IP. And now it is fully open source. I view this as a, uh, a real game changer in our approach and our philosophy around power. Uh, I view us, uh, the foundation, more like a startup uh, now than anything else. And really, our mission is to accelerate the adoption for uh, the ISA itself and open technologies that are uh, supporting uh, the ISA and built on top of the ISA. And that's why it's so important for uh, the, the work that Dr. Wu is, is doing on, on the curriculum and, and pushing that out there to get more people uh, knowledgeable about the full stack uh, of what Open Power um, can actually provide. Um, from the foundation perspective, we drive this kind of innovation through uh, specifications and compliance tests and product SIGs uh, and work groups that we have. Um, and our goal really is to grow the overall ecosystem as well as our membership um, to get more and more people involved and to collaborate uh, and to facilitate that community engagement as well as the visibility from what uh, universities are doing uh, to what uh, major organizations are doing within the um, open power ecosystem. And so from Open Power, you know, you guys know this, this is risk-based, it's fully open, it's free, it's got a, a very proven 30-year history. Uh, and right now it's, it's, it's actually completely driven by open collaboration through the foundation. So uh, if you're not part of the foundation um, uh, as a member, you can still participate, uh, but it's, it's very beneficial to you to actually be involved um, as a member to get access to all the resources that we potentially have. Um, and really it's enabling this uh, freedom of design across domains and industries. Um, and we, pr we provide all kinds of uh, tools and reference designs and resources to kind of de-risk development. So uh, whether you're teaching a class on power and, and architecture, all the way up to some company and startups that are adopting the, the ISA to build new kinds of chips for AI or HPC uh, workloads, um, we can actually get you a little bit further down the road uh, faster than you would just by doing it all on your own. And so why open hardware? Why now? You know, open hardware, uh, really, it's it's removes barriers. It de-risks the whole uh, process. So design risk, cost of entry, uh, partner limitations, potentially, uh, and supply chain issues it might have nowadays. And that's a very big thing. Um, what's really driving our industry around open uh, hardware? You know, we have open power. There's RISC-V. There's other things. Uh, in the open, but really what's driving right now is domain-specific computing, uh, performance gains that are going to come from fundamental innovation uh, at the SOC level, at the chip level, and and all these uh, cool and, and fun things that we're seeing now in the industry. Um, and also, really, just industry consolidation. We see a lot of the, the major players being bought up by bigger players, uh, and so you really want to try to diversify your supply chain there, uh, and so you don't get locked into something that you don't want to be uh, down the road and, and maybe potentially not have access to down the road, uh, as well as what we're seeing is uh, domestic tech innovation. So nation states are really looking towards owning their destiny in terms of the technology <clears throat> and not really being tied to one specific company, especially if that company is not uh, located in their, own, in their own country. So uh, open hardware is here to stay. I think it's going to gain even more momentum than it already has. Uh, and so that's why it's really important to be a part of what we're doing here at Open Power. Where Open Power is traditionally played and where we think it's going to be playing a, a better and more important role in the future. Um, what's funny about the slide is, is our current use cases are, are bread and butter. is really HPC, um, AI, ML, uh, as well as cloud and, and data center and edge. Um, and then the future use cases that we're seeing right now is kind of networking, 5G, automotive, storage, industrial IoT, but all of those power has already been played in 
uh, over time um, and been very successful in. But we think it's going to be even better uh, than this time around because of the open innovation, the collaboration model that we have uh, with the fully open source ISO. Some of the key work groups that we have is obviously the Power ISO itself. Um, and that's that's a newer work group actually that we stood up after we fully open sourced. Um, and we actually have a very exciting uh, new member this year called Red Semiconductor. They're out of the UK. Um, and we actually had changed our IPR policies around participation for the Power ISO so we can actually have members and non-members uh, collaborating in this work group. Um, and the whole focus with this work group is really to provide a mechanism for the evolution of the ISO um, while obviously preserving compatibility and verification. It's very important for the power ecosystem to maintain software compatibility. Uh, we have a very vast software uh, ecosystem for power and we want to maintain that and, and expand it as much as possible. Uh, we also provide flexibility just like all the other ISAs um, in terms of uh, subsets and different use cases. All of this is really to enable the uh, development of different kinds of uh, power-based CPUs, targeting different kinds of vertical and use cases. Uh, with Red Semi, they're actually one of the first ones to actually pull uh, an RFC and submit that into this uh, Power ISO work group uh, with their SVP uh, 64 vector um, instructions. And so that's underway and we're really, really excited to be working with them, collaborating with them. And um, I think they have very big ambitions with what they're trying to accomplish with power and we're really excited to, to collaborate them, with them. Uh, one of the other ones is the Libra BMC SIG. Um, I think Todd is actually gonna be talking about this um, later on, but this is, is very important. We actually just showcased this at an event last week uh, at the OCP Global Summit. Um, and this is around uh, fully open source baseboard management controller. Uh, this is a very important module and very important IP within almost the entire data center and servers um, plays a very strategic role in how you manage servers at scale. Uh, unfortunately, for the most part of the history, they've been very proprietary, very buggy and not very good at, at um, uh, uh, the firmware and the software and the hardware being secure and, and whatnot. Um, and so we had uh, stood up this new SIG around developing a software FPGA based one that's running open source firmware, open BMC. It's running on fully open source um, hardware module uh, that's um, from the OCP uh, DCSEM work group. And then we're, we're running it on FPGA so you can actually reconfigure it um, uh, in the field if you need to, which is, uh, we think, the, the way forward with something like this where hyperscalers and others want to want to update um, what they're doing with this BMC module. And, it full, and, and this project uses fully open source tools um, and a kind of software design, uh, co-design model as well, uh, which is pretty unique in the hardware space for us. And we actually have a new company called Axiata that joined recently that has actually taken uh, what Liver BMC was doing and actually enhanced it. And they're actually building a commercial product out of it. And enhancing that through uh, building like root of trust and a whole bunch of other security features, anomaly detection, um, and so they're they're very ex we're very excited to have have them as a member and uh, really looking forward to promoting what they're doing uh, throughout the industry and that they're, they're already getting a lot of good traction around what they're doing. The other thing that we we try to make a, a very concerted effort is uh, gaining access to power systems. So I know that um, you'll be talking about Power 10 and, and all the great things in that, um, but Power 9 is still very uh, well loved in our community. Uh, lots of people are still requesting uh, servers on Power 9 and Power 8 even. Uh, basically, they want to make sure that the power ecosystem and the software that they're running and porting uh, works on across all the different systems that are out there. And so we've stood up a work group called the Open uh, Power Foundation Hub where we work with specific universities and any university that wants to participate is welcome to. Um, if they have power servers, or um, they can actually make them available uh, for free to um, uh, people within our ecosystem who are actually developing and porting open source software um, and doing development work. Um, and we have, for instance, with OSU, um, there's FPGAs built into these uh, servers so that you can actually do hardware development on power systems. So you can do power development on power, uh, which is really kind of cool. 
Uh, and then we have, you know, GPU access if you're doing some uh, AI and M ML type work. Um, you can request VMs, containers. You can even request a whole whole system, bare metal system, if you need to. And you can get this uh, very easily through our website. You just go to the hub page and request what you need, and it'll be routed to um, the uh, one of the providers uh, that's closest to you. And we also have a, another initiative on the soft core CPU. Now we have a soft core, fully open source soft core called Microwatt already out there that we're using in the Libre BMC project and other, other places that was developed in a very short period of time by software engineers to kind of showcase how easy it is to get a power core up and running. This initiative that we have with a soft core CPU is around, um, can we build a power CPU uh, that is very high performant, but very very small and lightweight. Um, and this is really stemming from uh, IoT and kind of like embedded space and competing with RISC V on some of the benchmarks that they have been pushing out there. And for this, we have like formal verification, and, you know, utilizing open tooling, um, including Linux. Um, and, you know, we're using like LightX and a bunch of other open uh, tooling as well as software development patterns on, on this to, to showcase just how easy it is to develop with power. So some of the benefits, if you're looking on joining for, if you're a university or if you're a student, um, we have individual uh, memberships, community memberships, and then we have academic memberships. If you're a university, you know, we can accelerate uh, some of the technical development. You can get, um, get you in contact with other universities and see what they're doing. Uh, if you're members, you can actually, um, if you're students, you can actually participate in these work groups. Um, and, you know, we, we increase your visibility about, like, for instance, what this curriculum is laying out. Uh, we can evangelize that uh, throughout a number of other universities. We have a very vast university uh, member list within Open Power. And if you're doing commercial work, then you can kind of showcase your products and services. And we evangelize that uh, through uh, a number of marketing channels. And so if you think about value creation for our members, you know, we have technical deliverables, we have the compliance and verification that we do to make sure that uh, if you're developing commercial products with the power, then it adheres to the specifications. Um, and then learning development um, and outreach and obviously visibility and marketing and doing events together um, and kind of showcasing what you're up to at um, a variety of industry events uh, will actually be at Supercompute 22 in a couple of weeks. Um, showcasing a number of things in our booth with a number of members. Um, so very exciting work on that. And so you can join a, a work group today. You can actually uh, go to our, our website and then there are a number of work groups that are fully open. So you don't actually have to be a member, uh, but uh, we do recommend that if you want to engage fully uh, to, to join and become a member and that that is very simple. Uh, you can go to the join page and uh, it's an automated process. You can sign up very easily. And you can engage in the Open Power community in a number of different ways. We have our um, Slack channel and our IRC uh, bridge uh, channel as well. And then um, we have our Git repo and uh, our discuss forums. Uh, and by the way, all of this, our infrastructure for Open Power Foundation is actually running on Open Power servers. Um, and it's all open source software that we're running. So we're really dog fooding what we do here at the foundation and making sure that if we're going to put something out there, we want to make sure that it runs on power and, and kind of showcase the, the value. And you can easily connect with us. Um, probably the easiest way to connect with us is actually through the web, uh, website. Um, go to our contact page, send a, a message to that if you have uh, questions or concerns, and um, <clears throat> that'll be routed to the right person. You can obviously um, email us directly or uh, follow us on, on social media um, and uh, highlight uh, what you're up to, and we'll We'll evangelize that and promote that as much as possible. So with that, thank you. And I'm um, going to hand it off to the next.